What's up, Whittier? Welcome to What's Up, Whittier, a homegrown podcast. A podcast to showcase Whittier's businesses, personalities, and hidden treasures. Hey there, City of Whittier. Producer Christine here. Welcome to What's Up, Whittier. This week in our community corkboard announcements, we have a bunch of fun events that are going on, so let's get down to it. Every Friday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., we have the Uptown Whittier Farmer's Market. Come on and join us at the corner of Philadelphia and Bright so you can support your local farmers. On Wednesday, September 11th from 6 to 9 p.m., come on out to Uptown Whittier to enjoy a wonderful nightly stroll, support local craft artists for our monthly art stroll. This is brought to you by the friends of Uptown Whittier. Thank you so much to this wonderful organization that gets together and makes sure that the art stroll can be as successful as possible. So again, thank you so much to them. We are very grateful. On Thursday, October 3rd, join the Whittier Public Library Foundation for their fifth annual Booktoberfest. It is a festive evening of books, beer, and food. This will be Thursday, again, Thursday, October 3rd, 2019. It is at 7 p.m. and it is for those that are 21 and up. Tickets are available for purchase from the Whittier Central Library Whitwood Branch Library, and WhittierPLF.org. Tickets are $45 for WPL Foundation members and $50 for non-members until September 1st. Well, looks like it's past September 1st. So now tickets are $55 for members and $60 for non-members. So just remember you can go online to WhittierPLF.org slash Booktoberfest 2019. And tickets can also be purchased in person at the Central and Whitwood Branch Libraries. Saturday, October 26th, join the City of Whittier and the Whittier Community Foundation for another Whittier Spooktacular 5K Run and Walk. Again, this is on Saturday, October 26th from 7 in the morning to 11 in the morning at the Whittier Community Center, 7630 Washington Avenue, Whittier, California, 90602. And right after that event, starting at 3 p.m., we have the Whittier Uptown Association's Halloween Capers. So remember to eat drink and be scary. I don't know what that was, but who knows? So there will be costume contests. The first one will start at 4 p.m. and that is for the pumpkin patch ages 0 to 2. Then we have our little goblins ages 3 to 5. Creepy critters ages 6 to 9. The spooky kids ages 10 to 12. And our monster mash teens ages 13 through 17. There's also a zombie crew, which is for anyone ages 18 and up. So again, register online. Go to www.woodyeruptown.org to register for the kids' events. There will be trick-or-treating here in Uptown, face painting, and art activities. It's going to be a great opportunity and so much fun to get out there with the community. So again, thank you so much, everybody, for supporting the Woodyer Uptown Association for Halloween. Speaking of the Whittier Uptown Association, it is a very busy season for them. So it looks like on Saturday, December 7th, is the 27th Annual Holiday Sonata from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Again, Saturday, December 7th from 4 to 9 p.m. So this is going to have Cinderella and her horse-drawn carriages. There will be caroling and entertainment and picture with Santa and his elves in Santa's village. Just remember this is a family-friendly event. So come on out with your family, with your kids, with your friends, and enjoy a wonderful night in Uptown Whittier. And I know so many people have been waiting for this event. It is the 66th annual Christmas Parade in Uptown Whittier, Saturday, December 14th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. The parade attracts over 15,000 visitors from Whittier and surrounding communities. Many attend to see their friends and family walk through the historic event. Entries can include marching bands, vintage autos, floats, dance troops, drill teams, and more. Santa Claus also makes his appearance per usual at the end of the event. If you wish to be a sponsor or if you'd like more information, please contact Olivia Rios, the operations manager of the Whittier Uptown Association at 562-696-2662 or olivia at whittieruptown.org. All right, looks like that's all I have for this week's community cork board announcements. If you are a local business and you are interested in sponsoring 
uh, your announcement in the community quick board announcements in regards to sales or if you're going to have any specialty events, specialty dinners or, you know, any type of meals, let us know. Please send us an email at what's up with your pod at gmail.com. Again, this is your producer, Christine. If there's anything else you would like for us to include in the community court court announcements, please send it to our social media. Follow us on social media. It's at What's Up Whittier on Instagram and Facebook. Follow Remo the Realtor at Remo the Realtor on everything. He's so good about it. Go on Instagram, go to Facebook, go to RemoTheRealtor.com so you can sign up for his newsletter and also uh, give his team a follow. Follow at Team Remo the Realtor. They're really great people. I'm honestly grateful to know them. Don't forget to follow our very own J2 Architects, Jesse. Jesse the Architect, his firm. J2 Architects. There's a lot of cool stuff coming up for Jesse. He's looking to make his social media a little bit more interactive. So please drop on by, give him some love and go to j2architects.com. <clears throat> and like I mentioned in our previous episode, I am still running for mayor for the city of Whittier. I know it's pretty exciting. So I have a couple great projects coming up and hopefully I'll be able to sprinkle them in as we go on. I don't mean to bore you with any events that I have coming up, which I do. Please, for more information, visit all of my social media at Christine for Whittier on Instagram, on Facebook, and go to christineforwhittier.com. You are able to contribute on the website, which I'm so grateful for. Every dollar counts. You know, $5 is the difference between $995 and $1,000. So your dollars really matter and they count. And to have a successful campaign, we need the support of the community, really. So again, like I said, you can go online to the website christineforwoodier.com so you can contribute to our campaign. This is a people-run campaign. And also you can find out more information for the upcoming fundraiser on September 21st that I am having at here, the Whittier Brewing Co. I'm recording this uh, at work right now, so pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for your support in the community. I'm very grateful to know uh, most, if not all of you. Don't forget to go to iTunes and uh, wherever you're listening to podcasts and leave us a review. It helps other local Whittierites find us. Uh, so shout out to Mr. Don Marla, who's given us a review. Um, super cool Don, super fan. Um, also Reverend Ed, uh, he's also a super fan. Cool guys. So thank you so much, everybody. And make sure that you subscribe to the podcast also. For those of you that are expecting the Whittier Brewing Co. to open, you never know. I may just throw out the date when it's supposed to open. We are looking at getting it up and running soon. So thank you so much for your support. And yeah, take care, everybody, and enjoy this episode. Take it away, Jesse and Remo. What's up, Whittier? Dun, da, da, da. Remo. That was, that was a little loud. <laughs> we got we to gotta tone <laughs> that down. The Shh, baby's Jesse. asleep. Yeah, come on, Jesse. Shh. I don't know, man. Maybe we got to wake up the baby. No, no, let's not wake up the baby. Yeah. You don't have babies. You have kids now. Yeah, it's it depends. wake up the babies. Remo, it sounds like we're at a busy spot. Yes, we are here staring at a woman. A woman that has a headpiece, and we're at the mural, looking at the mural inside the Modern Shaman. I'm glad you said a mural because it was going in a different yeah. direction, I think. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize it because I saw the headpiece, and I was thinking, is it like a tribal? All right, well. That was my interpretation of it, at least. Uh, so you got to explain it further when you're, you're, you have no visuals and it's yes. all just audio, man. Next time, this. That's right, that's right. So we're at the Modern Shaman. Obviously, mm-hmm. we're recording off-site now. And uh, today we have the uh, pleasure of having uh, two awesome guests, special guests. Mm-hmm. Hi. <laughs> and if you don't know, now you know. Mike and Kim, welcome. <laughs> Hi. Thank you. See, I was, I was waiting for... I was waiting for Mike to say something like just and something this clever. Is, and, yeah, <laughs> no, I got we'll stage get fright. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, guys. Welcome, Thank guys. You. So we're, we're recording here at the Modern Shaman on Greenleaf. So you guys are uh, hosting us today, and we're going to get to know a little bit about you and your story and um, your adventures here in Whittier. We're ready. Let's do it. And actually, before before we get into the Modern Shaman. Um, the cool thing about recording here, which, which is way long overdue, is that this is where all three of us actually met, in the same spot. Obviously, different name, different restaurant, but, mm-hmm. but same location. 
Uh, this is where the podcast was actually formed. Oh my gosh, you're kidding. Yeah, yeah so. so. In the front area, we, that's where we all kind of met for the first time. When it was, when it was, it was working, working good? good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. This is where we started. So this is history. Though. This is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like cool. going back to the, to the historic... Uh, it's what like one that? of those buildings that's 100 years old, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's three years old. That's no, right. That's right. podcast. So the reason why I bring that up is if you guys want to put like a little plaque somewhere that says, uh, what's up with your podcast was born here? I mean, I don't know. Well, you'll have no. a special table here always. <laughs> no, Jesse. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm sure people are going to flock in because they see the plaque of... Well, Jesse, you've definitely put your mark on this space, um, you know, since then, being the architect that helped us out with this whole place and and got us going. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank that's you. That's right. That's right. Thank you, guys. Um, so with that said, for people that don't know what the modern shaman is, what is a modern shaman? Well, first of all, it's a restaurant. Is that what you meant? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. What kind of restaurant? Um, because we'll, we could talk about what is a shaman as oh, there you well. Go. Yeah. That's right. But that's, um, that'll be you that's know, maybe really later. Yeah. Yeah. So, that just registered. So um, Modern Shaman's a restaurant. We're new in Uptown Whittier. We opened on February 4th. So we're just about six months in. Um, we, we focus on making comfort food that's delicious. I hope everybody mm-hmm. feels that way. Um, it happens to be totally plant-based. So, um, in other words, vegan. There's no animal products in our menu, but you certainly don't have to be vegan to to eat here. Um, we just feel like it's another cuisine choice, just like, you know, anything mm-hmm. else in 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 the, um, the restaurant world. So, um, it was about a year in the making. Before that, it was um, Fork and Good. And it's funny because one day I just got a phone call, literally. Um, we had just returned from a big trip to Peru and Bolivia. Michael here, who, of course, owns the 6740 next, right next door. Um, he's been over there for 21 years wow. and quite a, a neighborhood institution at this point. I think 22 this year. Wow. This the 15th. On Jeez. July 15th, that's yeah. right. Oh, my gosh. So um, I was at home. I, I got a phone call. He said, Kim, I think I just bought the restaurant next door. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. And you're waiting for a reaction. It's like when a guy buys something and he doesn't want to talk to his wife. Yeah, it wasn't like, you know, a car yeah. or yeah. Uh, it was a business. Yeah. And... Um, but I love that idea. I love it. Um, I think Uptown's a really cool place to have a business. The community here, um, you know, because Michael's, you know, been part of it for so, for decades. Yeah. So um, I was like, yeah, okay, let's do it. But um, I've been a vegetarian since I was 21 years old. And it's always been a huge part of, um, you know, just my life. My whole entire family is vegetarian, strangely enough. It just worked out that way. And um, Michael became vegetarian when we got together eight years ago. And um, I go, okay, but it has to be vegetarian. He goes, Wait, was that the idea, Mike? When you bought it, did you say, let's yeah. open up a, veg- a vegetarian or vegan yeah. place? Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, we was. I think in my brain... My puny little brain. Mm-hmm. It was um, vegetarian, but just from that, I think a few days after that, it just made more sense to be vegan. Got it. Than to just if you're going to do it, just do it. Yeah. Yeah, we developed a menu that turned out to be vegan. We didn't even necessarily mean to do that, but um, that's how it and all we ended had up going a down. Menu. We worked on one a few years back. We were. So you guys been thinking about this for a while before yes, we you were, even got the yes. spot. We had a business plan and all for another spot in Los Angeles. Oh, nice. Years ago. Nice. Yeah, so a lot of it's not the same place. Yeah. But we had like that business plan? Yeah. It was adapted. No. No, no we you wrote st- it. We started from scratch yeah. again, yeah. So, um you know, yeah, Kim's good we felt at that like kind of stuff. like Whittier was ready. Um, the 6740 has had a lot of vegan options on its menu for the last few years, 
and, and they've that's where been really popular. Started. Business, business um, got much better, and we became a restaurant. So we we sell as much food as we do beer now. Wow. Nice. I know it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It was it was like you know realistically, it's really skewed for all of us in the in the pub industry. Yeah, it's really skewed. And then when I started doing that, people started coming and um, eating, and we sell as much food as I do beer and wine. I mean, and it, that says a lot because your your restaurant, or if you're ch- trying to find a restaurant that was vegan. Or vegetarian, or just but that or was, just healthy, or nutri- yeah, you know, like, nutritious. But that it's also good, right? Like it's right, it's, it's right. good in the, on, on the palate. You would have to drive out of the town. So now to be able to bring something here, I mean, it's it's definitely a game changer. I mean, if if uh, if you're seeing more of it pop up, mm-hmm. then that just means you're doing something right. You're now catering to a different crowd, right? Um, obviously, I'm not a I'm not a vegetarian, which I probably should. But uh, I, I've been here a couple yeah, times, quite and, a few. and for me, you, same thing. Like I'm like, why all would of you I, guys. Why would I go to a vegetarian you. restaurant to go get a meal if you know I'm and not? My mind is not there, right? That's what I love about this. I mean, a bunch of things I love about this. But um, like you guys, I don't. You are are you vegan, Christina? Oh, oh you're uh, not here. No, but I do plant based during the week, mm-hmm. and uh, I eat meat on the weekends. Because I know these guys aren't, and you guys come in here a lot. And I would say eighty percent of our customers aren't plant based. Oh, wow. they come with other people, or yeah. they just aren't. Yeah, and the food's good, so right? <laughs> and that's that's, that's all we care about. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's not all we care about, but we you know we care about having a plant based diet and exposing folks to that. You know, the, and I was gonna say like one example is that I've had the burger here several times, and if I didn't know it was a plant based burger, like. I mean, I, I, when we were eating, I'm like, man, this thing's a really good burger. And like, not realizing that it wasn't. It wasn't have you had the corn dog? You have. Yeah, I've had the corn dog yeah. also, which is good. Yeah. Um, so it's good. I mean, it, it, it fooled me. It fooled my palate. It fooled me completely, which is a good thing, um, because that just means that you could enjoy it. You could enjoy your food. Um, the first time I, I came here, and I'll share a funny story. Um, you know, I. Not really processing what vegan is, what what it's not, and so we get the nachos, and I see some, and I'm thinking every time I order nachos, no matter where I go, they put sour cream, and I say, hey, no sour cream. So I said, <laughs> see, um, with, this, with the nachos, can you not put sour cream? Ever, my wife looks at me, she's like, are you serious? I was like, what? I don't want sour cream. <laughs> she's like, they don't have it. It's vegan. You're good to go. You're like, safe. Yeah. You're safe. I was here. like, oh, okay, well. And then Eva, Eva's pretty into the vegan menudo. Yeah, she is. She yeah. actually told me to bring some with her. I was like, I'm not going to bring some with you. I'm, what are you talking about? I'm running around. I'm not going to carry vegan menudo. We went one place. Good. I don't know. Some. We went to a restaurant one time, and we got some menudo, and we were, I think, Ubering somewhere, and we <laughs> had this oh, menudo with us oh, for like no. two spots, and we left it in the Uber. Oh. So uh, anytime she asked me to bring soup home, I just say, no, it's not going to make it home. It's going to. And somewhere else. Yeah. I thought you were going to tell us you spilt it. I know. <laughs> no, no. I probably spilled, unfortunately, but um, no. So, but, but Mike, you've had that also on the 16th, yeah, for, years. for years, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, can you talk about like where that came from and, and why it still well, continues to? One of our cooks in the back, our manager, he's been with me forever. He's such a great guy, Marillo. And um, yeah, we just worked on it. We worked on it. I knew I was going to, you know, use a vegetable base, and just kind of we. It, it took a long. Didn't you take Morelia's um, wife's, you know, family yeah. traditional recipe? And I just, you know, jacked with it. Took the yeah. took the um, the meat broth out, put a veggie broth in, and just made it the way I wanted it every time. Yeah. And that was just, you know, no, I need more chili. I want this. I just made my perfect menudo. Yeah, yeah, nice. So, so do you, I mean, when you create a new, like, dish, do you say, okay, what does it look like with, without plant-based, with, with meat or whatever it might be, and then take that out and then kind of try to replicate it? Or how is the process of it? It can work that way. Mm-hmm. Here it doesn't work that way. Okay. You can do that, yeah. I think a lot of places do. And, yeah. Um, Alfredo. Uh-huh. The Alfredo we have is, you know, it's based on fettuccine Alfredo. 
But it it's, happens to be all cashew cream, you know, still garlicky and, and decadent. Rice noodles and, and um, you know, like an Alfredo sauce, but it's yeah. it's made from cashews, so it's all plants, and, it's, and the, the noodles are gluten-free because they're rice noodles. Instead, they're like Vietnamese from the chili. it still has to be satisfying and yeah. creamy. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, and on our menu, we really wanted to do, we didn't want to focus on one particular um, cuisine origin. Like, we didn't want it to be all Italian. Yeah. You know, like, that. we wanted it to be pan-cultural to represent um, all of the tastes that we find in Los Angeles. And um, there's nothing cooler about the greater L.A. area and Whittier absolutely, you know, is the diversity that all of the, um, the cultures bring. I mean, just like at this table. Yeah. And we got to thank George Ibarra cultures. for her. God, getting kind of choked up. Yeah. He came in here and um, he was our banged first that shit out. And, and, um, <laughs> oh, shoot. I can't you see. Can cut. Sorry about <laughs> that. <laughs> you just we'll edit it out. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry about that. You can't. Uh, uh, yeah. He, he, so George Fox Ibarra, he's, he's born and raised Whittier. Nice. Um, Carlos Campos, who has created this food that is being put in front of us at this very moment. He's back in the kitchen. He's born and raised Whittier. Um, pretty much everybody in our kitchen, everybody in our, our organization um, is is the plates are coming in. Yes. Yes. Coming Nobody's in. listening to what I'm saying. Good. All I'm eyes listening. are on the, on the table. Yeah, ex- they put extra sour cream for you. <laughs> yeah, so can we have a knife? So we so, just got some. some so, food yeah. put so, in it was George's creativity. Yeah. I mean, mm. creativity that um, catapulted, catapulted this oh. and um, jump started. And and he's he's um, he had a good vegetarian and vegan cooking background. Um, That's what I was gonna say. That, like it's that, but it is that. But it was creativity. Is I would say. Seventy-five percent or eight of the battle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with well, any, and that's the ca- going to be the case with any business. Right yeah, you know, in the culinary arts, absolutely, because you're literally creating a product that people p- put in their mouths. You know, yeah, yeah. so um, you know, it, it also has to be. It's our kitchen is all about cooking with, you know, making it with love too. So I hope that comes across as well. Big time. And I think it's going to, I was going to say, part of it has to do with, like, when you're going into creating these flavors that you guys are putting together, and in a sense, you're trying to to get that same flavor as if it was a, ri- like, well, I mean, I'm looking at the cheeseburger, right? So if you're trying to put together the flavors of what a cheeseburger will look like, is it, uh, again, in my sense, trying to appeal to somebody who eats meat, um, Having that background of you, being you, experienced you, that you said that what flavors will look like, yeah, but that's it. It's I think you meant the flavors taste like, yeah, but it's look like as well. That's yes. what the menudo. That's why the menudo's extra good because it yeah. looks like it's fattier than it is. There you go. So it's it's there's it's looking it's eating with your eyes as well. Yeah. yeah. So that mm, there's a satisfaction in that. Like yeah, it's a whole like experience. The whole right? boy right there. Like I love. An oyster po' boy is so, it's so American. It's so New Orleans, and um, so we figured out a way to do it with oyster mushrooms instead of and that's, you know yeah. actual seafood. And that's seafood. A George. George mentioned that years ago before we even we even um, started this. Sure, yeah, nice. I've known I've known him for quite a while. Him and his brother. His brother worked for me. Nice. So we have some food here, guys. Um, so walk us through of what we're seeing yeah. here. So we have our our best seller, the jackfruit nachos, which without um, sour cream, with no sour cream, <laughs> extra sure? sour no cream, <laughs> extra sour cream. Um, the jackfruit is a fruit that grows in tropical jungles, and it's this huge thing. And we just cut it into little pieces and smash it a little, and fry it and season it, and um, Everybody, you know, everybody says it tastes like carnitas. Um, we also have a couple of impossible burgers here, two different ways for you guys, because I know you're fans. Um, we have the the, P, the get in my belly PB and jelly. Yes. Impossible over here, which is the burger with vegan bacon. So it brings that savory, smoky aspect with some peanut butter and jelly. It's 
crazy combination. Yes, crazy. You said it, but good. Yeah, when I when I. You've had it. Carlos, <laughs> Carlos introduced that idea, and I was like, "That is crazy," but let's try it, and it, it works. Stuck. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we have just like more of a straight, straightforward burger here with um, some vegan American cheese melted on it, and then the the po' boy um, with the battered and fried oyster mushrooms on a, a soft French roll and a sriracha uh, aioli. So um, you know, dig in. So so based on all this. And going through the menu, because like you said, your menu is very eclectic. It's got yeah. a lot of different flavors from different places. Mm-hmm. What's your current dish right now that's your favorite? For me, I... <laughs> favorite's whatever's selling, right? I, yeah, that's <laughs> well, no, absolutely... What's your favorite? Meaning, what, what, like if you're eating today, what would it be? For me, it's... Um, well, on Mother's Day, we introduced a new burger called the Mother Clucker. And it's a vegan fried chicken that has barbecue sauce and then, uh, you know, lettuce, lettuce, tomato, and onion. And it's just, again, also really straightforward kind of, you know, American-style food. But um, it just, the texture, everything, that's, that's, that's your go-to. my go-to Mike? right now. What's your go-to right now? Um... Potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'd be, I, I have to admit it. Okay, I, so I don't we, have time. I don't okay. eat very much. I yeah. don't eat here. I don't eat there. I just eat on the run. Mm-hmm. And if I could pick up a plate of potato chips and just, it's satisfying. And I wish, I wish I had time to have that. That looks really good. I think that po' boy looks super good. So I, I'm gonna admit I've had everything here um, except the traditional cheeseburger. I've had the cheeseburger. Uh, I've had that one and the other one that you have on the menu. Yeah. What's the other. Uh, have you had that? The barbecue one. Oh, the mother clucker. Mother clucker. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I've had the nachos. By the way, the nachos are really good. Um, the the chips, cheese. The chips for the nachos are really good. So we make we make them here. You know these these chips these tortilla chips are probably made within. Certainly t- today, you know, probably yeah. just in the last couple of hours. So they're super fresh. The cheese is like all creamy, and we make it yeah. um, from scratch ourselves. It's not like weird tasting vegan cheese. Um, we make it here, and we actually start with potatoes and carrots, wow. which is kind of a, a different twist on it. Um, so and, and again, when it's all like the look, the feel, the taste is just like so on that, it, like spot on that. Man, I, I could eat here every day, you know. Uh, Eva and I came at Good. night, and we came back for lunch the next day. I know. I love seeing you. I know. I was back in the office um, during dinner, and my, I get a little alert, you know, that somebody just posted a story from Modern Shaman, and I, I'm like, oh, my God, Rigo's here. So yeah. I run out here, and I'm like, hi. So, and then we come back the next morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Remo, what, what's, what is, no, no, what's your oh, you're not going to say, mm-hmm. again, my, my go-to, which is really good, is, is a PBJ one. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't had it with the, I don't remember having it with the bacon. It always had the bacon. Oh, it did? Yeah. Oh, so mine was like undercover, which is why it was good. Um, but yeah, man, that burger is really good. Yeah. Mine, hands down, is a, is a bacon burger as well. Or the, the peanut butter and jelly, jelly yeah. bacon burger. Which, which is if, if you don't see it on the menu, you can still order, right? Because it's, it's on a special menu. There you go. Just yeah. say you know Remo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. And then it goes yeah. on, yeah. and it goes to his tab. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, so some, take some bites. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy. And um, uh, in terms of in terms of the name Modern Shaman, where does that come from? It went through a bunch of names. Yeah, we. It wasn't very easy. Yeah, we we wanted to name a, you know a special name that had meaning and significance, um, not just to us, but sounded interesting Good job, in man. general. Like that. Good cutting. Um, so, oh no, that's for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Oh, man. So, in the, at the very very end of 2017, we took uh, an adventure into South America. It was basically, you know, just pretty much a vacation for us. But um, we ended up traveling with 
meeting and, and um, being led all up and down the country in, onto Lake Titicaca, multiple um, islands and temples and ancient spaces um, with, with shaman. So we, we were traveling with, with, we traveled with one shaman, and then she um, would, would bring in the, the um, wherever we were, she would bring other shaman to, to teach us, and we would do, um, you know, we would travel to ancient Incan temples. Of course, um, you know, we went to Machu Picchu, but... After uh, which everybody knows in Peru, they've heard of that, and it's kind of I think it's considered one of you know the seven wonders of the world. Right. But um, that actually turned out to be like that's for tourists, you know, based on all of the <laughs> other crazy, amazing stuff we did there and saw and experienced and um, and learned. So it, so it kind of turned out not to just be a vacation; it, it turned into a, a spiritual journey. Nice. And with the shaman there, we did a lot of ceremonies and um, nothing weird. It's um, it's just about connecting with with the the earth, that which is um, their mother nature. They they call her Pachamama, and um, that's that goes back to the mural that we're sitting below right now. Um, I don't know if you mentioned is, Pachamama, Mother Earth. Mother, it, Mother Nature, Mother same, Nature. you know, okay. all just same thing, but different names for her. And actually, this this mural, I just want to call out. Um, she was painted by local artist Sergio Robleto, and he is amazing. If you look him up on Instagram or or whatever, he is constantly doing a mural somewhere in either Whittier or He's East Los LA, um, Royal Heights. He's, he is so talented, and I feel so fortunate that um, that he was willing to come in here and work with me and listen to my ideas. But then he came up with the design nice. entirely, and it incorporates a lot of the um, the archetypes and the symbols from shamanism. Hmm. And it also, though, represents it's a modern woman. She is a she has a modern face, you know, and she is. She um, has strength, you know. She has muscle tone in her arms, <laughs> and she she represents the th- the three levels of shamanism with the serpent snake, the eagle condor, um, the hummingbird represents our ancestors and how they lead us and guide us in the on a on our path. Our journey, yeah. Um, the her her halo. Uh-huh. Her, you call it a headpiece? I, I That's okay. I call it a halo. Okay. You know, so it's like a botanical halo. So um, that represents, you know, nature. And the shaman in, in Peru and Bolivia, they work with nature, and they are basically just the, the indigenous healers, the mystical healers. So they, they work with um, things from the earth. They pull from the earth, literally rocks, you know, um, plants, Feathers, you know, all of that kind of, um, those kind of items, and they they heal, you know, physically and spiritually and emotionally. It's mind, body, spirit, and they um, also heal and do clearings so that you never, hopefully, have to get sick in the first place. It's like a proactive kind of healing. And when we came back. We had done um, ceremonies where we, it was the end of the year, end of 2017. We had done a lot of, you know, like identifying, what they guided us to do was identifying things that no longer serve us. And you do a fire ceremony, you know, you, you, you think of what doesn't serve you anymore, uh, a, a person or a job or a thing or a thought or an idea. You, you put it in a stick, you like, blow it out of you and you burn it so it's just you know like getting rid of stuff that no longer serves you just good and then you get rid of the stuff and then you you draw in you know you set intentions to draw in what what you want and there's another other ceremonies where there's despacho ceremonies where you're um like calling on 
good for all. You're calling on um, um, getting rid of it, not just for ourselves, but for, for the everybody planet. else. For the planet. For, and for, for our loved everybody. ones. It wasn't just us, the, the, tw- the ten of us. Ten of us or twenty? Eleven. Eleven of us. That we're traveling together around, in Peru. Sitting around that with the shaman. It, we were putting this in, doing it for the earth, which was pretty... It was pretty super um, emotional, and it was really great. It was really bonding. So it was um, Kimberly and I, someone from San Francisco, um, one from well, we Michigan. We people from Finland, Russia. Um, uh, fi- uh, where were they? Other so people. it's just random it was, people, you know? No, yeah. random people yeah. that we got really close to. Nice. And yeah. those, Canada. Yeah, we almost, there was one... We don't have time to talk about it now, but we had to, we had this thing where the bus almost went off the side of the road. Whoa. So we oh, no, bonded. it wasn't the side of the road. It was a off cliff. A cliff. Well, off the cliff. Off a cliff. It was it's pretty one crazy. of the you know those stories that you hear happen in Peru. Yeah. We lived that on a daily basis. There it was came emotional. A point. Yeah, it, was, it was pretty emotional, and we all were together. <coughs> and this this bus is sliding. Oh. Wow. And it's I mean sliding. It slid maybe you know. No, but, but when you're on a, a when cliff. you're on a when you're on a cliff and yeah. you're on a bus. And it's way too big for the hairpin turn. Yeah. And they're, try- they're trying to back it up, but it's sliding forward. The guy runs Can't out, puts a carpet under to get traction. It's not, it's not working. Pulls out a boulder. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> yeah, just back and forth. You know, when you're it's, 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 it was, the grade was really, yeah, yeah. really. Anyway, so back and forth. There was a point where we're all kind of just had to go deep. This is it. That was, yeah. that wow. was scary. That was under like the... F- that was like the, the only time day. in my life where I have, like, I feel like my palms were literally going spurt, spurt, yeah. spurt. I mean, you know, they talk about the physical reactions you have in yeah. fear. My palms were sweating. Yeah. And everybody on the, this bus was just it was frozen. So there's this big giant bus with only 11 people in it. It was supposed to be more people on this trip. So we had this big, the bus was just too big. Yeah, yeah. It was big downhill, this big. Oh. Wow. So Michael was a few rows back in back of me. We weren't sitting together in that moment, and I was like, "We're we're facing death in this moment yeah. in our heads, you know who knows." But I turn around and I I'm like, "Where Michael? Where are you?" And I I try and he's just sitting in the back of the bus, eyes closed, and he's in prayer. He's talking to someone, and right then in that moment, I know we're gonna be fine. Yeah, we're gonna be fine, and maybe you know wow. that's why we were. It was such a crazy moment, and that that represented like almost the whole trip. I realized a few weeks into the trip, every day I started to wake up and think, "How will we almost die today?" You know, <laughs> a bus. Uh, we had crazy stuff happen on airplanes like little airplanes because um, oh, right, you're right. flying over the Andes every day we would wake up at like 14,000 feet you know just being at that elevation yeah. is intense not being able to breathe mm-hmm. and emotionally Your head all, this ser- all this stuff mm-hmm. going through mm-hmm. everybody was ill yeah. at one day or more than some days and going through emotional and it's not just stuff. us it's, it's everybody. everybody Michael was on the bus um, I was in the hotel dealing with some Montezuma or revenge wow. stuff. So I didn't go up into Machu Picchu the second day. He did. On the bus coming to, back down, there is a girl on the bus having a seizure. So, with, do you want to hear the story? <laughs> There's never anything good on the radio these days. I bet I could do a better job than that. to produce or host your own radio show? Well, now's the time. What are you waiting for? Join WIP Radio Uptown Central Station as we showcase the Whittier community voice to the world. Are you into sports? Entertainment? Human interest pieces? What's up, Whittier? Or your own DJ hour? Email info at WIPRadio.com Or visit our website, www.wipradio.com, to learn more. I'm going to follow the social media, WIP Radio. That looks dope. So, 
So, do you want to hear this story? Yeah. So this girl, so we're going the bus on the way down. I did. Um, what's the what's the other? What was the other peak? Ma- Machu Why? Picchu. Why you Picchu? Why you Picchu? So I, it's it's above. There's a little like mountain mm-hmm. behind it. Every time you see it. So I climbed that the second day, and I'm on the way back. Myself and the my our group, four of us were back there, and maybe it was two up front. Um, Vadim sitting next to me says, um, "Hey, look, this one's." And she's like, "Looks like she was from you know, she was definitely American." And um, she was just kind of like waving and kind of the, getting a bumpy ride. Mm-hmm. Then um, her nose starts bleeding, wow. and she, her head just thunk on the side of the on, on the side of the um, window. Window. Yeah, and um, the girl next to her freaks out. I don't think they obviously didn't know each other. She jumped over, and there happened to be. Um, a shaman on board. No way. And they just look like normal people. You know, they, they've had well, this you, yeah. the shamanic training in their healers. The, a lot of the shaman that we traveled with were completely indigenous, pre-Inca, wore the, you know, full... Um, Kiros. The, the, the Kiro, Kiro, they, you know, they wear the, um, the, the cape and, the, you know, like all of the colors. They look so cool. But then there's also just modern shaman. There you go. And he, and yeah, he just jumped in. On the bus. He jumped in and he um, held her and he um, oh. just did her, did his thing. And I, I was right between, right, and I was right there. Vadim's right here. And this is happening right next to me. And by the time we got to the end, he just, this girl was fine. No way. And did she it was know, pretty, did, was she known to have Caesar? Caesar no, no, or? this was just some random woman. I don't know a who she was. Oh, it wasn't part of no, your part 10 of our group. No, no. Oh, okay, got no. it. Just a random person on the bus. Maybe she didn't eat all day. Maybe she was, you know, could have been a million different yeah, but things. The wow. bloody nose part, you know, something was yeah. going Caesar. on. And she, and she he, mm-hmm. yeah, he just grabbed her and did, um, like, blew into her crown and her heart. Not like, and, um, Wow. Blew, blew a bunch of stuff on him and, and saying prayers and um, patting her. It was um, it, it was doing really mellow and people yelling her to stop the bus. You can't keep going because the bus is just like rolling yeah. down this thing. It was pretty pretty intense. And I was like, man, this thing happens right in front of me. I wow. wasn't in halfway down the bus. Yeah. I'm sitting there watching this thing happen right there. And wow. it was and I land up so crazy enough. This person has been to Whittier. No way. And he has. And he is. He is my um, my good friend Patricia Pintz, of, of acquaintance of his, Doctor. P- um, I can't think of his name right now. I'm gonna look it up. And he was. Um, yeah, it's this person I described. What is happening to Patricia? And oh, I think that's blah blah blah. And it was him. I looked it up. That's the guy. Wow. So I connected with him on Facebook and. That I, you know, I was there on the bus, and that's pretty, pretty wild. That yeah, it is. That he was right there, like for and, me to express. And at that trip, is that when the name just said, "This is what it has to be called"? No, or we didn't even have this, this. This wasn't even an idea. This that this place fell into our laps um, after after that. So on the week be- between Christmas and New Year's, mm-hmm. and we came back on I think on the first or second. So, the, and so, so, the, the, so we came back, and I feel like all of the work that we did in Peru with the shaman, and all the, without us even knowing, sort of manifested this opportunity. So we didn't think of that name immediately, but once I thought of it, and that, then that was the Michael, next question. Who is Michael the, who, molded it <laughs> over. It wasn't, a, it wasn't an easy sell. See, yeah. I, I was expecting that, that Mike was going to say, let's just call it the 6740 adjacent. Like, <laughs> <laughs> <some> adjacent. <laughs> adjacent. Well, we You're such an architect. 6744. Yeah, 6744, 6740.12. Yeah. Yeah, the place so. next door. Yeah, the place yeah. next door. Ah, yeah, it could have gone any direction. But I just feel like we wanted, it was a great opportunity to honor um, are the experience and the the opportunity that dropped on our our heads, and you know, I'd like to think it's because of the wor- the work that we did um, on that spiritual journey. Also, I will say um, I learned from the shaman they the way they do their healing. As I said before, they pull from the earth, from Pachamama. 
as a vegetarian, I believe that food is medicine. And if I can feed people pulled from the, food that is pulled from the earth, in other words, you know, plant-based, I also love the idea of feeding people in a way that will help them to not get sick in the first place. So that's another little, you know, connection there. And that's the way to get the cycle going back in the right direction. Because, you know, we, we if, if, as you're doing that, that's how you start improving things. Because if, when it's going the other way where you're just eating anything and just, you know, a couple of days ago I was at the landfill and just seeing all the plastic oh, and all that. I saw your that. pictures. And, and it's... And so once you start yeah. starting that where now let's go the other way, that's when you see the improvements. Right. So. Right. Exactly. So in its improvements for your, for your body, everybody mm-hmm. wants to, be, to feel good. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be healthy or healthier, whatever that means. Yeah. And, then, and then it carries over into the environment and the planet, yeah. not to mention, you know, the animals appreciate it too. So yes. So, so, so Dennis, I know you mentioned that to Evan and I one time about like the ingredients. It's not just that. It, there's more to than actually having just vegan food, right? Is it some of your suppliers? And I, I know we talked about maybe beer in the future. I don't know if we could talk about that. That would be all vegan. Oh yeah, yeah. So we. It, like we, we said when we started out, we just thought it'd be vegetarian. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know if a vegan restaurant would be financially, financially viable. Mm-hmm. But it turns out, you know, we created this menu with George that is, it, it is, you know, totally plant based, one hundred percent. So that has been an, a, a crazy mind opening experience because I'm learning, I'm reading and I'm researching and I'm learning all of the things that are not vegan. You know, like like sugar. Um, oh, we, sugar's we can, not vegan? Sugar is not vegan. It is, it's processed with bone char. Hmm. And um, so, you, so we can only use organic sugars here. Organic cane sugar, you know, and, and we're good to go. But uh, I didn't know Pabst that. Blue Ribbon is vegan. Did you just I just it looked it up yesterday. Oh my what God! Are we going to yeah. bring in PBR? Yeah. Go, PB, oh, look, you can never go wrong with PBR, right? I PBR is what. <laughs> I know. Pabst like, Blue Ribbon. Oh, <laughs> it's a, it's a <laughs> drink. I was thinking of another. I'm, I'm getting a peanut butter oh. and jelly sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> What's the acronym now? <laughs> PB and J with the PB and R. Oh, yeah, I yeah. think we have a, a menu item there. It's a combo there. Okay, we don't have PB and R's on the menu at this time, but <laughs> hmm. no, eventually. Um, so, so I also learned that most wine, especially red wine, is um, not only not vegan, but not even vegetarian, which freaked me out because, you know, I do, I, I love to drink wine. Be- so before, all these years. Before you go into it, what's the difference between vegan and vegetarian? Well, vegan is 100% no, no animal anything, no animal byproduct. Um, vegan, you know, it's more than just, a, and it's more than just a diet. You know, veganism can be many things, but it can be a lifestyle. So, well, in terms of in terms of food, in, in like, terms of food, what, what, um, it is it's no nothing that ever came from an animal or 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 um, seafood or you know anything that had a consciousness. I guess I mean even plants have a consciousness, but we so have no to, animal we have to, products. Period. None. Not okay. no. Um, no honey. Um, you know, I no longer wear leather or suede or, you know, anything like that. So the, um, what else? So what's veg- like, what would be vegetarian then? Well, the, if it, che- we could have dairy, you know. If it was a vegetarian restaurant, we'd have cheese and eggs and, and um, right things that animals did not die for. Oh, I see. So, so vegetarian is, is uh, still obviously the vegan meal but except that you can include byproducts from animals right as long as they didn't have Flesh. to lose oh, their go. their life to give it um but but then that goes off into a whole correct you, you correct. know then then when you in veganism then you also consider the suffering of the animal yeah. to that that came along with producing that gallon of milk or or whatever yeah, so yeah. It could go on. It could, and it, <laughs> yes, it could go on. So, 
Which is for me, again, I, I, it's hard because, you know, I, that's what you, when you walk into a restaurant and says, well, we're only vegan or we're vegetarian or this and that, it's like, do you use, not sell food? Or do you do sell food? And if you do, what kind of food is it? Like, can I eat it? Can I not eat it? Yeah. 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 And that's the the line we're trying to gray here. That's exactly what we we want. Yeah. To. We just first and foremost want to want to make and serve delicious food. Yeah. Which I think you guys have accomplished. I mean, like I said, Thank just you. coming in several times. I mean, I knew the backstory of where you guys were coming in, in terms of the menu. But to actually see it on a plate and actually taste it. And you know it. where the backflow valve is. Too. Yes. <laughs> and understand, you know like, every, you know, the, the way the, I mean, the way you guys do the food, I mean, it's just, it's, it's good. I mean, it's, uh, you would, I, again, I wouldn't notice a difference um, unless I, you, you know, I know exactly what's going into it. So. Yeah. Well, good. I had a question. Where were you eating before? Because I know before you set up here, you were dining somewhere. Is there places around here that that or is everything really more on the west side and other parts yeah we would go downtown la a lot yeah. we um, live in los angeles so we're not right, here anymore. i'm i'm here working before this is here got it so kim has spent her time in los angeles and that's also um a big part of the reason the 6740 started introducing a lot of vegan because you gotta eat vegetarian <laughs> options because i would go over there and it would just be like there's nothing here for me to eat. The I, water. Like where, where <laughs> else beer? can we go? Uh-huh. Yeah. Caps Blue Ribbon. Yeah. Caps Blue Ribbon. Yeah. 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 Okay, which were my... <laughs> wanna I want to jump back to the wine and beer thing really oh, quick. Yes, yes, yes. Wine is um, very often... It's called, there's a filtration process to get you know all the, the stems and the, the, the seeds and the, the um, skins out you know from the grapes. So to, to clarify it, it goes through a filtration process called fining. And the traditional sort of ancient techniques that are still in place used today um, by many, many winemakers, you, they run it through something called isinglass, which is fish bladder paste. So I, I'm, I've been drinking... As a vegetarian, I have... Paste? Yes. Who, who, yes. Crazy, huh? The winers, who, who comes up with this? Let's use this product. I know. That, I know. Great. It's like, just sounds so uh, dark ages. Yeah. Which, you know, is so archaic. which is why I don't... Which is why don't drink red wine? Because yeah. I knew it had it in there. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. You just, didn't like the fit. Yeah. yeah. No fish bladders for you. <laughs> yeah. And beer also... Beer, beer is often... Um, includes egg whites or um, gelatins which are made from animal bones and yeah. hooves and stuff. So they, a lot of the beers are not vegan as well. That's interesting. So we've had to really... Um, there, beer is a lot easier. Beer is like a, a less ancient, you know, mm-hmm. technique um, in production. So it's been... And, and there's, there's um, a lot of breweries, you know, here, like Modern Times in downtown L.A. They are entirely vegan. They have oh, really? a vegan restaurant. And um, we serve, we have two of their beers on our menu. So a lot of the, the vegan restaurant or the vegan beers uh, or the beer comp- makers are more forward and and not including animal stuff in their in their brews. Um, wine, not so much. Wine has been much more of a challenge. Yeah. So. So, so, but do you guys offer a vegan option for wine, or is this? Oh yeah, entirely. Okay. Entire every, everything, everything. Everything in here, here is vegan. Everything. Okay. Yeah. And that's for me, basically. Nice. I don't expect everybody to care about that, mm-hmm. and you don't, you know, you don't have to think about it. Yeah. But our wine list is amazing. I work with really, really great um, reps from the wine companies that will do the extra work to to go and make sure. Again, just for me, that that um, that fish bladder plate paste isn't thrown, uh, yeah. you know, getting now I getting thrown wine. in there. Now I can drink wine. Yeah. <laughs> as long yeah. as you come here and yeah. drink it, yeah. that's it. I yeah. found my spot. Yeah. Oh man, that's awesome. Yeah. Again, that, that shaman's name was Doctor Pio. Nice. Dr. Pio. I just, there I, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Doctor Sh- Doctor Shaman yeah, Pio. Yeah, Doctor Phil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Don guys. Peel. I don't remember what's going on. So uh, I know you guys have a couple of things going on here in the Modern Shaman. I know on Wednesdays you have like your you still have the wine special. Yeah, or, we do. We have wine Wednesdays. There you go, wine Wednesday. So um, every Wednesday when you come in to eat, all the all of the 
the bottles of our great wine list are half off. And that's just, you know, to because we're still new. I know there's still, we're, we're doing our best to get the word out. And thank you, you know, for helping us to do that here today. And um, I'm just trying to, you know, let people know that, that we're here. And here's a really good reason. Even if you're not vegan, you don't have to be. Everybody, you know, can come and enjoy the, the food and the wine, especially on Wednesdays, yeah. Awesome. You guys got anything else during the week uh, in terms of, like, uh, kind of some kind of promotion? or? Not really. Um, right now it's just Wine Wednesdays where, you know, we, I got, I, it was very difficult for me to find a sparkling wine, a champagne or something that was vegan, but I finally did it. So we're making, you know, amazing uh, mimosas. Oh, Steve. nice. So, um, and you know, we're using different juices right now. We're use, we're doing an organic orange and blueberry juice combination, and and um, I'd love to do more events here. Uh, you know, maybe have a, have a shaman come in and do one of these despacho ceremonies. Right. It's just it's fun and it's positive and it's yeah. um, you know just about living in the light, you know, and and um, attracting what you want. And yeah, one just walked in um, a few days ago and she just, hap- just happened to walk in. She was going to the bookstore. So I'm on a shaman. She walked in and it turns out we met her years and years ago. I don't know how long ago in Laguna Beach. And in passing. In and passing. now it's like, she and, shows up in our place. And I looked at her and go, I know you from somewhere. And no, we didn't know each other from anywhere. And then... Um, I think we must have been on Facebook way back when, or ma- ma- message, and then there was a message saying, I don't know, connecting. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, and she. So we might have, you know, I'd like to have maybe someone like that, her, come in and do an event. Um, I'm having people have their, you know, we're having uh, groups that come in to have their birthdays or, or whatever. Next Tuesday, there's a book club coming in, and. Um, I'm going to be opening sacred space as a shaman because, oh, actually, we're going to shaman school as well after we came back from Peru. Um, we're, we're working with a teacher in Phoenix, and um, so we're, we're learning the healing techniques as well. Wow. And um, we don't know very much yet, but we're getting there, and I can't, I can't open it. sacred space. We had to so. stop what we were learning because this place just happened to oh, pop yeah. in while we, we're... Mm-hmm. We kind of uh, got busy. so they held our spot for yeah. us. They're so yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, and it's just a pretty cool family. And two people from that bus ride are are um, I've been here in our in class. The, in the oh, school okay. with us. Yeah, one the per- shaman uh, school. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. When she came in and and saw the the shaman, did she like put the same we resemblance? Here. Oh, you weren't there. Okay. No, that's why I want to bring her back and. Yeah, find out why she even came in here. Do you, I get so she was going to the Dharma bookstore. She was going so, to Dharma bookstore. She she has those cards. The mm-hmm. uh, you know, and when you think yes. about so so shamanism is kind of even though it's ancient, it is metaphysical. Mm-hmm. It's dealing with the the unseen kind of. It's not like Western you know medicine, mm-hmm. but it is healing, and it's dealing with um, the sp- the spiritual. And when I think about what's going on here in Uptown, that we don't even necessarily um, process, you know, like Aura's World down the, the street, in the past year they have doubled in size. Tripled. That place is huge. Which, yeah. which place? Aura's. Like over day, yes, like, yeah. like it's just. It's right on the other side of the movie theater. Over day. Yeah. Right Eva goes and gets sage there. It's perfect. <laughs> that, that, that's what I was Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so these little. Metaphysics is metaphysics is making inroads into our lives, you know, in ways that like we don't even notice, and and it's just all positive, you know. It's all about just creating a better life, good vibes, you know, whatever you want to call it. I wanted to say before you guys were talking about the whole the, the where you said uh, your food is your medicine. Yes. I don't know who said this, but. Uh, it it, it kind of t- it reminded me of this quote that uh, they said that man man has two lives and he 
man has two lives and the second one starts as soon as he finds out that the first one the and first it, one is about to end or has an ending and, and it's like when I heard that, I was like, oh, man, it's like, it's true. It's what like, kind of beer were you drinking? When I know. <laughs> PBRs. Uh-huh. Yeah, drinking. <laughs> How all, many of them? I'll be here, my friend. No. Uh, but it's true. It's like, it's one of those things like you, you got, it almost, for some people, you got to get to a point where like you got to, you got to change that, that lifestyle. Yeah, we have two lives and the second one begins when we, we realize we only have one. There you go. And so, uh, does it say who said that? Huh? Confused. Confused. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And so, like, uh, who dad? And, it, and it's yeah, un- yeah. And it's unfortunate, you know, because it's like you know you want to be able to to be here as long as you can, right? Um, and places like this obviously would help because it's it's uh, you're enjoying what you're eating, but at the same time not knowing that it has an actual benefit to it. You know, so. I want it to like you know taste delicious as you're eating it, and then I, w- I want everybody you know to f- just feel comfortable here. Yeah. I want it to be a place to hang out, yeah. um, you know, date night or bring the kids or or whatever. It's definitely exactly what you're saying to every you know to every level in every way yeah. for for this community. For sure. Kim, I have a question. For the six months that you guys have been here, what things, ha- what like things that you would have done maybe a little bit different with the the vegan menu, or like some things that worked, or some things that didn't work? Well, we've learned a lot in the kitchen about production, and we came out really high level, really high level. And I tell everybody back there. I want you to create this, you know, this beautiful food so that when it's set down on the table in front of somebody, mm-hmm. they start eating with their eyes first. The, and and I, I know that that is the case because when we set down food in front of somebody, the you grab nine times out of ten, you, yeah. they're grabbing their phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is, oh, my God. I'm, you know, I'm so honored. I think that is, that's so cool. Um, so, so everything. We're. Tr- I mean, even though our prices are not too high, mm-hmm. I've tried to really, you know, keep them reasonable. Reasonable. Yeah. Um, I want everybody to feel like they're having a special experience with with the food that is put down in front of them. So, at first, our production was pretty elaborate. Um, I come from a, a background in apparel manufacturing, which is production, mm-hmm. and I never ran a kitchen before. I don't run the kitchen now, but I can. I observe the operations as the owner, you know, every minute that I'm here. So there were some things that we needed to um, streamline, and that has happened. A, couple, a few, you know, a few things have needed to come off the menu just because they were so labor intensive. So that's that's definitely one thing, and we're always trying to to evolve and grow and go to the next level. Is there something you guys are, are kind of testing in the kitchen for future future item in the menu, yeah. or anything you guys? Yeah, there is. There's always that anything you want to anything you want to yes. yeah. so, so, so give we, a hint on or um, or stay tuned on. There's a, a tempeh Reuben coming. Ooh. So there's like a nice deli sandwich. Um, I, I think it's corned beef that usually is in a Reuben. Yeah. But this um, this tempeh is marinated. Um, Justine Morris, our one of our cooks here, has been developing it for for quite a while now, and it is bomb. Um, we're working on a, a black rice poke bowl, and then a gazpacho for summer. And there's there's constant. Um, we're constantly th- throwing stuff at the wall back there. More tacos. But we, we won't be doing, you know, traditional Mexican food, you know, culture tacos. We'll be doing our own twist. Like the two tacos that we have now, the, um, the pho taco, which is a Vietnamese riff. Which is really good, by the yeah. way. Thank I, you. I, I, had a, I get them all the time. What are, Christine's passing around. Business cards? Go- oh, yeah, business no, cards. these are, these are from are, the shaman. It's, her name is, is Isabel Stoloff. She's in, or- in Huntington Beach. She's in Orange County. So we're all pulling cards. Are these considered shaman cards, tariff cards, or what? She she is a shaman, so I would say that she has 
um, created them from a, a sh- place of shamanic healing specifically. And each card has a symbol on it that is going to have um, some significance. Um, I think a lot of them are related to either the chakras. I, I, have, I haven't checked this, but I'm assuming that they have um, relationship to the chakras, to energy, and to sacred geometry. I would assume. They're all really beautiful. And what is your say, Jesse? As I say, we'll just go through around and, and read out our, our own. So mine says, your words are spells, your thoughts are things. Oh. Which, now that we're talking, I mean... I'm hoping I can put you guys under a spell somehow. <laughs> <laughs> My, mine says, looking to buy or sell, call Remo. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes. Give a, psh, got it in there. Yes. No. Uh, no, mine says, once you let go, your life takes flight. There you go, man. Let it go. Let it go. I'm okay. I'm oh, let, no, let no. Go. Oh, don't let it go. Yeah. <laughs> you really want me to let it go? No, don't let it go. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I think I just took a turn. Um, Mine says, when you live from an authentic place, anything is possible. Very cool. And, um, you know, manifesting is is what this all boils down to. Yeah, yeah. If you hadn't had the challenge, you wouldn't be who you are. That's a good one for you. We just heard about the bus ride, so. Oh, Oh, man. Oh, I've I've had issues, I mean, personal issues. Since I was a kid, I mean, I had hemophilia, I had hepatitis, I had all kinds of... But it's who we are today. Too. Yeah, exactly. And you've been exactly. running a, a successful restaurant in Uptown Whittier for 22, 22 years now. Years. I mean, yeah, that's a challenge. That's... Like, what's some of the biggest changes you've seen being here as long as you've had <laughs> in the Uptown area? A ton. Where do I start? Well, <laughs> what, what are the good ones? You know, Let's start there. The, the, what are the good ones? Um, more, we have some great... People working up here, living up here, um, great business owners. We're all so tight knit, and I just like, truly like everybody. I wish I was closer. If I was closer, I'd sit, spend more time with them, like I used to when I was closer mm-hmm. here. And um, yeah, it just everybody is just so authentic, and um, all for one, one for all. It's pretty great. Nice. It's pretty. Um, yeah, it's not. It's not. We never thought of ourselves as um, as uh, as competition and stuff like that. It's always been to lift each other up. It kind of came naturally. Yeah, and it's pretty great. And that, that happens with good people. When you have good people, people want to lift each other up as opposed yeah, and to even, feel you maybe, Yeah, exactly. You don't. Yeah. And I think that. Yeah. Does it? That yeah. starts. You got scared well, when Christine gave you the finger. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> gave you the finger. She, yeah. yeah, the index oh, finger. Oh, the, the wrap it up. The hurry it up. Uh, <laughs> not, well, well, not that finger. I was going to follow it up with, with that being here that long. What is one thing that that um, what is one thing that you miss oh, in what is? I miss foot traffic. <laughs> Can, I have a little answer for that too. I'm here every night, every night, after the sun goes down. And when we first opened, we started doing our soft openings, and it was, we started um, in January. Actually, we started super soft openings with the brown paper still on the window with, like, just friends and family, like guinea pigs, basically. And it was Christmas time, and... All of the people that we brought over here to Whittier, my mom who lives in Bakersfield, my sister from Altadena, you know, we're drawing them over here. And they're like, oh my God, Uptown is so magical and cute and the lights in the trees. And the stores were staying open later and it felt great to be here. So now, you know, the seasons change and... um, like I started to say, I'm here every night after dark, and it's really dark out there now. Yeah. I miss I miss the um, the lights in the trees. Yeah. I miss businesses that stay open past dark, as a business that is always open after yeah. dark. I think that there are things that could be. I wish that there were things that could be done that would bring the foot traffic, bring the families, bring people walking their dogs. Um, like they're they're doing 
I don't know if it's the city or Parks and Rec is doing this movie theater um, seri- or movie, movie theater in the parks mm-hmm. series this summer. But it's only three, and it's in a different park every time. And who can track it? I would love to see a movie series in the green space right here on Greenleaf. Yeah, that's a perfect space. For you it. could just put it on the, you know, either get one of those blow-up projector or um, yeah, yeah. screens, screens yeah. or just show it on the side of the one of the, the buildings there, you know? And everybody can bring a blanket. It's be... Well, the par- there's parking right there. There's public restrooms in the parking structure. It's like the perfect place to just draw people on a regular basis. Um, I miss that kind of thing in Uptown After Dark. Which is a, a very valid point. You got other cities that have something similar during summer where they do that yeah. in these big open spaces. Yeah. And it just... Talk about drawing a family to go have mm-hmm. dinner, you know, mm-hmm. snacks or dessert or, mm-hmm. or just hang out. You know, it, it's a perfect draw. Um, we'll get, we're going to get it. Well, we started our Whittier questions, I guess. You started um, early, but go ahead. What, what is, <laughs> if you're not here at the Modern Shaman or at the 6740, where would, where would you frequent? What's your go-to? To grab a drink, grab a bite? Go say hi to somebody. Well, what's your uh, your your place currently? Um, currently, yeah. I will go to the commoner. I will grab food from Veggie Cat. I would. Um, yeah, hold on. Shout out to Laura at Veggie Cat. Also, uh, and her pioneer um, as far as vegan cuisine goes in this neighborhood. A pioneer in her, in the community as a business owner, she's she um, came in here and ate night before last. You know, I, I sit down and we talk and we. Did she tell um, you how many times we see each other at different places? Smart and final. Oh, and, and I, like, I, 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 like, time. always. <laughs> yeah. And then you know, knowing yeah. everybody, um, like um, Tony at the um, Crooked Gap. Crooked Gap. Yeah. Yeah. We were both. We were all three of us. We're same in, place. Um, same mile. Smart and final the other day. <laughs> that happens so much. I love it. Yeah. We love the vibe at Flight. You know, there's yeah, not of a course, lot flight. That's, that we can eat there, but oh my! But we find it, and they modify stuff for us, and they always have great wine, and um, and the people are super nice, and we love Jay and Nakomi. Very cool. Yeah, it just it doesn't stop. It's everywhere. It's Everywhere. Michael's yeah. shopping I don't in Melrose go. Vintage pretty much every day. Yeah, we have to Where's your shirt yeah. from? Melrose Vintage. Yeah. I, think I'm wearing, yeah. I think I'm wearing your shirt, Mike. Yeah. Is this the one you just sold? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm buying. I don't think they sell yet. Yeah, and um, but I don't frequent, since I have haven't lived out here, I don't frequent too many places okay. up here. Where I was up here all the time. Yeah. And, you know, visiting everybody and doing all that stuff. If there was something missing in the city that you would like to see, maybe if it already was here and left, that you would like to have come back, what would it be? Because you go way back. I mean, you went to high school I was, here. I, yeah. I, yeah. I listened, and, and, I'm, yeah. and I'm not, I I'm not a, a Whittier person. I did live here. I lived here when I was 23, and my dad lived That's up on Greenleaf. And... I moved in with him. I was going to Cal State Long Beach to save rent. I gave up my apartment in Long Beach. I moved in with him up in Starlight Estates. Wow, Dad, mm-hmm. you got a nice view. You got four bedrooms. Mm-hmm. What do you say? Mm-hmm. Sure. So I got a job at the warehouse record store on Whittier Boulevard, which is now, I think, the paint store down in Edwards or something. Oh, oh Goodwill. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, it's the pa- oh, is it Goodwill now, the paint store on Kalama and Whittier Boulevard? Across the street from that store, no, yeah, the Spain store, done, Sherman, yeah. it's Sherman Williams. Done, Sherman, no, Williams. Still done Edwards. Oh, Sherman, Edwards. Sherman, okay. yeah. done Edwards, yeah. Anyway, uh, Michael Katchoff was my boss when I was no 23 way. years old. So that is when we originally. Oh, 24. That, <laughs> we, that's when we originally met. Uh, I only lasted there for maybe six months. Did you fire her? I know. This. Yeah. No, she oh. left. So I was. We should have started there. I know. <laughs> But we remained friends. I actually was living with my dad because I was saving money and um, trying to sell my 69 Carmen Ghia so I could go to Europe because I was just like, 
didn't yeah. know what I was doing in college. I needed to like go have an adventure, come back, and then I figured it out. But I left um, Whittier and got on a plane to go to London for months and came back, went back to Cal State Long Beach. Michael also went to Cal State Long Beach, ran into him there. We started hanging out again as friends. We were friends for a long time. We were friends for years, and in fact, Michael came to my wedding in the early 90s. So that's how, I, and I, I even, I remember what he wore. You know, he, he we were he always, good. he looked good. <laughs> yeah. Except for a bow, he was wearing a bolo tie. Yeah. But otherwise. From, from Melrose? Was it? <laughs> 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 I wonder if he has them. Good idea. Oh, no. I should check into that. Oh, no. So that's how far we go back. Uh, and also, I should... that Okay. He came to my first wedding. Um, but when we were in Peru, we were actually married by shaman in Cusco. In oh, Peru. Nice. So. so he was there for that wedding, right? For that wedding. Yeah. yeah, he, yeah. yeah. We were there for that, too. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's an awesome story. You know what we need? No, well, I okay, got a lot of time yeah, to think. I bought you some time <laughs> but to it think doesn't about an answer. Anymore. It's because, um, you know, because the internet, the way Amazon and buying online, that stores like um, Port Bain and Local Fixture, they just, those short stores like that don't exist anymore yeah. because it's not cost effective for us to go to the store, find parking, jump in, yeah. jump out. So, st- and that we had twenty years ago, there was a ton of stores out here, yeah. and it was that's where the, when, that's where foot traffic came from, and there was people walking and yeah. doing their thing, like we all did, yeah. and um, yeah, it just doesn't happen. But that's not Weedier's fault. That's just the way technology. All, that's the way we're heading. Yeah. But it says something really cool about Whittier that a store like Local Fixture and Port Bain can can survive and, yeah. and thrive, yeah. like. People, uh, the, people are all about community here and supporting it. And I hear that all the time. Oh, I'm so yeah. glad that you opened this restaurant, you know, because we want to spend our money in Whittier. So yeah. that's, like, important to people. So, so I'm going to go back to history. So what is one thing that you remember from way back when? That, how, that, how far? A fond memory. However you want, yeah, like a fond memory. Like, man, I remember I used to... Okay, I've listened to your podcast enough yeah. to notice that the, uh, this is where everybody says the roller rink. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, <I> was, <laughs> no, not me. I don't think I ever went down there. I had hemophilia. I could bust an ankle. Yeah. I could get hurt. So my brother didn't get to do that stuff either because I might get hurt. Um, I probably like, um, I don't know, if you're going the way back, it's like Shermer's or the Shermer's down there where... Um, uh, probably that. Lo- I bought. What was it? I bought, um, it was a um, German deli mm. on Hadley. The building is still there, across from the ice cream factory. Um, 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 Bobby has a Shermer's, I think, T-shirt. And um, but we have a legendary Levels here. Yeah, that's what I, I was going to say. I bought Aerosmith I rocks Levels there in 1970. Whatever. A legendary the what? Sorry, legend. Original um, record store. Oh, record store. Okay. An independent record store. Uh-huh. I, I m- might be one of the oldest in Southern California. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty legendary. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of have a gem there. It's pretty yeah. great. Well, what is something that, I don't know if you mentioned this, that your go to vegan place outside of this place, outside of your own home? She's like, none. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just you know, come here. We don't get to travel very much because we're working all the time now. Mm-hmm. Well, when there started... And so to, many have opened up When, when vegan we've opened st- up. restaurants started popping up around mm-hmm. greater L.A., you know, that was amazing, like Cafe Gratitude. Mm-hmm. Um, I walked in there the first time and ordered, you know, all these things because it was overwhelming. You mean I can eat anything here? Mm-hmm. You know, and um, Real Food Daily... Um, there's one in Pasadena and then in uh, across from the Beverly Connection, kind of West Hollywood. Um, Zinc is a vegetarian restaurant that I, I've always loved. Mohawk Band. Mohawk Band that has um, a lot of, like almost half of their their, yeah, their food pizza. is vegan. But it doesn't matter because because yeah. you got to come here. Well, right? now it's, it's, now yeah. people are saying the exact same thing when they come here. All I can eat everything in here exactly. without. Having I know. To. I know, and a lot of those vegan restaurants in the beginning, they, we would um, 
go in and order so much food and spend $100 on lunch. Yeah. And I'd walk out and I'd go, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm yeah. still, I, like, yeah. I can only digest so much shard, you know? <laughs> So that's why when we were putting together this menu, it was super important to me that it be comfort food, it be filling, it be rich and satisfying, but still plants. So, so my little tip, if you do come and dine out here, is ask for a side of nacho Wait, cheese. If or when? You said if. Come on, Jesse. When, when, you, when you show up. Thanks. He's fired. At, yeah. no. at, make sure you get a side of uh, nacho cheese because that thing goes good on anything. Yep. And just order the P, Not B, sure. and J. The get in my belly, in P, my B, belly. and yeah. J. Don't order anything else. Burger. Just get that. Everyone that comes, just get that. And then the, that should be everyone's like starter to it. And then they realize yeah. this is really vegan. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Try um, breaking those boundaries. Well, we're excited that you guys are definitely in here in Uptown. And uh, we'll continue to venture off here and try different things I'll probably try the exact same thing but Ever will, <laughs> will try different things and I'll taste it from her plate and with that said I mean yeah. where, where can people uh, I guess give us your actual location uh, physical location so then, our, our we're located in Uptown Whittier on Greenleaf at 6744 Greenleaf Avenue, right next door to 6740. Adjacent. <laughs> Adjacent. The place next door. Um, across from the levels, you know, across from, um, next to the commoner, around the corner from Melrose Vintage, all these places we've been talking about. It's tight up here. Um, you know, close to half a block from where you guys have an office. That's and, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know where you are, but you're driving around yeah. in your yes. in your, yeah. in your cool car. <laughs> um, and social media. Social media is Modern Shaman Kitchen on Facebook and Instagram, and then the website is also modernshamankitchen.com. Uh, I want to mention, give ourselves a little shout out that um, just about ten days ago, maybe two oh, yeah. weeks, we. Uh, I get this blog called Eater LA, which is, it's, it's a national blog um, that focuses on all of the major cities in the country for, for it's a restaurant business and um, dining blog. And it's, it's probably, it's the biggest one, you know, certainly that I know of in, in Los Angeles anyway. So, you know, I get the email, oh, there's a new, there's a new one. And, oh, the, um, the new list for the, 25 essential vegetarian restaurants in Los Angeles, and we were on the list. Wow. Very cool. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's, I mean, it's, it makes my heart pound. It's, That's huge. It's like, yeah. I couldn't believe it. And we're, you know, we're, we're there with, like, Cafe Gratitude, like yeah. the big boys. Yeah. And, um, and I'm, I'm just so honored and so grateful, and it says so much about the, the, the work, the hard work, and the love that you know that they put into the food in the kitchen, and then the um, the dine- the server staff, you know, everybody, everything has just come together so so wonderfully. And, yeah, and you when know, you get when the, you get the the, the, that, the it's folks amazing. here, you guys, you guys for your support, Jesse, you. for the for building the walls, for doing all that stuff, um, our families. Just Our family here, mm-hmm. yeah, the yeah. 6740 crew that comes here and eats, you know, they come here and enjoy. And yeah, yeah. My, my employees come here and buy lunch and sit there and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, we're going to be starting delivery pro- hopefully by next week. That's been a, a big thing to figure out because I was like, oh, we'll just hire a guy, you know, and he can drive around in his car and deliver for both of the restaurants. Yeah, yeah. But insurance does not allow that mm-hmm. um, at this point in this um, world of liability concern. So we did a lot of research, and we're going to go with Uber Eats here. But then actually... Oh, we're doing Postmates. At, at 6740, he just start, started with Postmates last week. So... Um, I'm sorry. One thing I missed was the bike ride, the uptown. Oh, the uptown curry, yeah. Those guys were great, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, we missed them. Come Albert, back. Albert was had it all together, and he got it all. All those guys working, and yeah. there was a point where they had all of our all of our restaurants going, and yeah. they were doing I don't know 
let's say five a day from yeah. how knows how, how many? Yeah. yeah. Five, 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 what? Five, five, five um, orders. Five like, Let's say just from the six and forty. Just from like, just from me in one day. And, and they were they on do, bicycles. They would do the um, Delhi Express. Delhi. 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 They did a chicken and, coop. Uh, they did a chicken coop. Yeah, that's right. Off the hook. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're doing quite a few. So, so what, uh, what are the hours here? We are open Tuesday through Sunday from 11 a.m. and then um, either until 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. We're closed Monday. Um, we do a lot of takeout business. You know, if you want to, if anybody wants to give us a call and place an order and come pick it up for the time being, but otherwise, pretty soon look for us on Uber Eats, and hopefully, okay. it'll make that easier for people. Perfect. Awesome. Thank well, you. thank you guys. Thank and you thank for you for feeding us. On. Oh yeah, yeah. thank you so much. It. It was delicious. And Remo's going to stick around for seconds because he... Uh, yeah, well, there's still, uh, <laughs> there's still some sandwiches. We can get some, some carrot uh, cake. Some, that's right, that's right. Some vegan cheesecake. Yes. Yeah. Menudo. Thank yeah. you, guys. Can I ask Thank you guys what's... I know we're supposed to... Yeah. What do you, <laughs> he what gave you, you the finger, Christine. Yeah, Take what that. do you want up here? Only what, uh, what I want up All here? three of you guys, yeah. What do you... What would you like to see up here? Is that what... Yeah. Was not to ask you. What would... Like, what's missing? Ask you, what's missing? What I think is missing is just more uh, housing, like like more more either apartments or condos in the uptown. Um, and I I think I've said this several times is that if you're trying to really create that foot traffic, then you have to have people who are actually living here. That's valid. So they could walk down, get their local coffee in the morning with the pastry, come down for lunch, come down for dinner. You know, have people meet them here who are out of towners, you know, or, or say they're, they're living in L.A. Yeah. They say, come visit me at my house. We'll go grab, you know, a good cafe down the street or a little shop here. You know, so I think if you put people to live in this area, it, it'll create its own economy. So that's yeah. what I think is missing. Yeah. And when that happens, if you're thinking about. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was waiting for that. Yeah. Exactly, Rima. Yeah. You know, uh, I would say uh, a place for kids. Um, I know we talked about yeah. uh, that place in the, in the Greenleaf uh, space, what is it called? The oh, Piazza right. or... The Paseo? Paseo, like some sort of Paseo where mm-hmm. someone could come, you know, whether they grab the food here or they bring their sandwich, they can eat, have their kids kind of play. And there's a couple of vacant lots here on Greenleaf. Like a kid dog park? Yeah. Yes. Something uh-huh. just right in the uh-huh. area. Oh, a park. That, that's yes. what they call it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so something like that, that, yeah. you know, family could come out and have the kids play and... And continue that foot traffic here. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, there's very few places where if you're pushing a stroller, I mean, you're you're probably just going to look, but you're not coming inside places. Mm-hmm. They're right. not kids are not playing. Right, yeah, and you think good. about there's there are those places like in Glendale or uh-huh. you know the Americana, yeah. or um, the Grove, and they're they're prefab. They've been created to be to feel like community, and they they put a fountain and a park so the yeah. kids can run around and there's music, but it's not real mm-hmm. then everybody leaves and goes back to where they really yeah. live mm-hmm. you know that like that would be so cool maybe. if it was organically yeah. you know created and like here. i agree 100 percent agree with what jesse says once you have people living here mm-hmm. you have a hundred residents and now people are coming people are consuming here because if why would you drive when you can just walk downstairs and you know get a sandwich get a coffee get a cocktail whatever it might be yeah yeah i think that's the future yeah. that's that's um See? what future generate that yeah uh, what were you going to say again? No. What was uh, the question? I was going to yeah. pull out that millennial <laughs> yeah. word. <laughs> yeah, well, y'all heard my answer in episode 100, but I think uh, movement. Movement. Whether it's people yeah. moving mm-hmm. into residential areas here, whether it's people mm-hmm. moving into businesses here, whether it's helping businesses get going faster. You guys were working on this project for two years. I think a lot of that could have been cut. Right, a lot of that time was waiting for commissions, maybe to get together you know, or anything like that. You know, I got it. No, it was a lot of all the stalling was more on us. On you know, well, just, just, I mean, the as city an example, did, there are different. The places. city, the city was so, the city was so great. They were so accommodating. They, um, they helped. They didn't. They were, you know, and with Jesse's help, not Jesse was there to um, to quarterback it all, and. It was. They were really good. 
Because you, you're this Mr. Woodier, that's why. Some people uh, think <laughs> you've been around and you're an icon here. You have the key to the city. <laughs> those guys don't know me. Oh, come on. They've all bought a PBR yeah, from you. All of them. <laughs> no, but they, they were really, really great and supportive. Well, I still say movement. So. <laughs> no, no, but it is. You're right, but movement. But I mean, it wouldn't be necessarily that they were. It took us a year, but it took us a year of. There's finance and there's all kinds I mean, of. I'm not blaming it. I'm not trying to place no, no, blame on any no. sort of organization or anything. I, I just say that it. things move so slow, which is kind of the charm about Whittier. But if we want to have a vision for a future, it, it, it can't take this long. Well said. What's the other question, Mike? Are we done? <laughs> um, Mike. Yeah. And my address Mike's, is. Mike's uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you helped me. Yeah, go back to that. You and my brother um, did a lot of stuff. And by the way, I mean, we have to have another sit down uh, podcast with you, your brother, and your uncle because, like, there's a lot of history you guys have. Like, Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill, I mean, it's. it's um, yeah, Uncle Bill comes in here often. Yeah, so so his uncle is actually uh, a colleague of uh, of somebody who I used to work with, and it, it, it's it's funny how this connection happens. But just uh, I sat with you guys for for a couple times, you know, and mm-hmm. just the conversations that we've had is like it's been pretty good, man. Yeah, I mean, I'll kind of throw it out there. I thought you were gonna say your the 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 fondest memory that you have was was uh, coming close to, uh, uh, what's it, Richard Ramirez? Uh, uh, oh, oh, our backyards. On your backyard. Yeah, which yeah. Is, no, I lived on Lundin in the office strong. This which is, is We had, yeah. we had Patty scary. Corner backyards on that, those people who got um, murdered. You were on strong or you were on Lundin? Lundin. Oh, yeah. so That's right. The yeah. house on the other side yeah. of the fence. Yeah, so our Caddy Corner, like, our... And they s- and they said... No way. So mm-hmm. Michael and his brother were home that night alone. You, were you guys in high school? Because um, this is in the like, '80s. I, yeah, oh, I don't know. If it was in the but '70s, they were... said they they say um, didn't somebody knock on the door that night? Yeah, I think someone did. <laughs> Mike's shaking the head. Don't, He's like, please <laughs> don't, don't go. There. Please don't remind me. Yeah. Please. I know. Anyways, we'll leave it for the next but time. They didn't okay. Answer. We'll, we'll have you talk about it when we have you <laughs> yeah. on. Again, thank you guys for coming. And uh, for those of you who have not tried modern shaman, you guys got to get out here and make sure you order your set of uh, cheese <laughs> and your PB and J. With Get no in sour, my belly. With no sour cream. Yeah. Thank you, guys. All right, thank, thank you. Bye, Woodier. See you later, Woodier. But you just, but you had your editing skills together. Okay, good. On the fly? You're editing on the fly? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, like everything. Mm. Um, like I said something, and then I got to like keep it in to hear it again. Like I got to keep it in and like replay it. Mumble, mumble. She's gonna bring us. Jess is gonna bring us food. Should she just like? Yeah. Bring it in. Okay. 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 The only thing the wish the wish can you hear all that? It does. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It'll add to it. Okay. Okay. In busier ones. Mm-hmm. No, it's good that no one can see right now. <laughs> <laughs> With real food. <laughs> <laughs> With dead animals on it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>